what's a workaholic? If, if there is such thing as a workaholic, I would say that I am one of them. Somebody that just, it's on their mind all the time. They work a lot of hours. I mean, I'm working seven days a week most of the time. If I'm out riding my dirt bike or uh, snow skiing, it is hard to release your mind and forget about it. But the difference is, is I think workaholics love what they do. It's, it's real important to me. I get asked the question a lot, like, what's your favorite boat? I think it's the next one every time. You have to be getting better because everybody else is. Is it, is it rolling? Yes. I'm Mark Morris. Uh, I'm Mark Morris, owner of Visual Imagination, and we paint we paint some of the most some of the most recognized recognizable. <laughs> can you can you somehow make that first part sound? <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm Mark Morris, owner of Visual Imagination, and we paint some of the most recognizable boats on the water. So I grew up with you know my mom, dad, brother, sister. My brother and I played a lot of sports, basketball, baseball, and football from kindergarten through high school. We would go to the lake. We did a lot of water skiing, bass boat for fishing, but no performance boats. My dad was into riding motorcycles. He decided to you know get, get the family motorcycle so we could go trail riding together started riding, he took me to a race, just to watch. I decided that I wanted to be a racer. So he bought me an 80cc motorcycle and we, I started racing in 1979. I was doing really well as an expert amateur and thought, you know what, I'm ready to move to the pro class. It was definitely an eye opener. I had to continue to get better in order to compete at the professional level in that first year. It was rough. And they got better as you know as the years went on. You show up at a na outdoor national, there's 200 of the fastest riders in the world there. They're narrowing it down to the top 40. Jeremy McGrath and Jeff Emig were the top guys back then. During my prime, I was on the gate every week. Racing was my full-time job. The discipline to do what he did, to be the top 100 in the whole world, basically, the discipline to be in that kind of level, that kind of competition, it's what drove him to be what he is now. What drew me into painting was I wanted to paint my own car. You know, I was 15 years old and I was gonna be getting my own truck and I wanted to paint it. It was horrible, but I thought it was great at the time. And then the painting just continued. I was doing some of my own helmets. I did my race hauler. You know, I had people wanting stuff done along the way, just little things while I was racing. I ran into an old friend he asked me if I'd be interested in painting a boat for him. So that's kind of just how it all got started. Then I realized that, you know what, this, this could be a business. At that point, I was you know, considered at the end of the career. I had 21 broken bones and doesn't count all the concussions that I had and the sprains and you know, ligaments and all the injuries that go along with it. So, Basically, you end up kind of beat up, and it's, it's just, at that point, it's kind of time to move on. I retired in September 12th of 98. I bought this property in 97 with the intention of building a building on it and starting this business. 
And now, of course, I live less than a thousand feet from the shop. So I drive my little Polaris Ranger to work every morning and traffic's never bad, you know. I called it visual imagination way back uh, years ago, before I was really doing it on a full-time basis. I started off with me, and then shortly after that, hired on another young kid, and another one came on board pretty quickly after that. We were one of the first companies in the business of doing it to this level. You know, there were boats being painted way back when, but there wasn't a lot of airbrushing going on. And, you know, I feel like we brought the, a lot of that into the boating industry. You know, we did a lot of projects for Randy Kent. I went and introduced myself and, and I'm like, so I see you paint boats. And he goes, well, I, I race motocross and uh, paint boats on the off time, and so I said, I got a boat, would you be interested in painting it? Every company has those customers that were there in the beginning, and they've always been there, and they probably will continue to be there. But I feel like Randy's given me as a ton of opportunity to prove myself. Would it take us like three hours per bill just to weed all that stuff out of it? It took Randy three hours. Well, I did about an hour. Whatever. <laughs> we were doing all these projects. And then when Randy decided to build Speed Racer, that was when it like really took off. With a reputation for being a perfectionist and never being in a hurry, Mark has agreed to create a floating masterpiece in just three short weeks. Every screw, every bit of it was very custom, very themed. It was a one-of-a-kind boat. After that, Mark's phone just started ringing off the hook. Everybody that was involved really got a lot of publicity on that one and you know, it unveiled at the Miami Boat Show and it was really the hit. Well, if you're walking around the boat show looking for the neatest boat here, this has got to be it if you're a performer. And it kind of started the snowball of all these theme boats that we'd eventually do over the years. And it's all new. One that really blows me away that he did was the uh, Looney Tune boot. It was late one night and I was helping him put stuff away. And I went to grab one of the hammers that was in there and realized that it was a painted hammer. His talent with doing that is unbelievable. You know, it also got us in with MTI. They were relatively new at the time as well. It got the ball rolling and we've done so many boats for them over the last 20 to 25 years. From that point forward, you know, I had to prove that I could keep doing it and uh, prove that we could continue to get better and stay on that cutting edge. The important part to me, is, as far as raising the bar, is having that thing to absolute perfection when it leaves. Whether it's the airbrush work we're doing or whether it's the layout where the lines are perfect, every portion of that has a specific procedure that we use. You develop kind of a system from start to finish. That's like the most important thing. I built the reputation for visual imagination on what I considered extreme quality and I feel like we really set the standards. You guys' expectations are beyond anybody I've ever met. If you're driven to have that kind of business and, and have the clients that we have from all around the world, well, that's what you have to do to have that kind of thing. Today, I only have myself and four others, and it's a, it's a really good team. Everybody's on board. They're quality conscious, all of them. Yeah, they all came 
here with no experience. And I, that's what I really love. They don't have any bad habits. You train everybody exactly how you want it. You, they use your system. And right now I couldn't ask for a better team. The way we do it, they have to learn new skills and maybe take it up a notch. And that's including myself. I feel like I learn stuff every day. I have to be looking for that next, you know, that better way all the time. And, and I, change, I change our systems frequently just to dial them in a little more, a little more to make them better. You know, when something's not good enough, Mark will make it better. I know I challenge Mark a lot, you know, the, the Monopoly boat was it, so much detail in that boat. Then we step it up with Speed Racer. And then after Speed Racer, you know, the Ferrari comes along, Lamborghini comes along, the AMG stuff comes along. At Cigarette, we always wanted to have the tops. We wanted to have someone that really cared. And Mark is a, an incredible all-in-one package. I met Skip at the Miami Boat Show. You know, I had a ton of respect for him. I learned a lot from him. We painted every Toronto that he built. It was fantastic, to be honest with you. He's honest, he's a businessman. He really cares about his work. He's proud of what he does. Mark is really such a good person. It's real important to me, that part of it. Everybody that comes to our shop, I mean, it seems like a big majority of them end up becoming your friend. Craig, of course, you know, we did the 52 MTI, we did the 42 center console, MTI center console, we did the 44 DCB, and then we also did the pontoon boat. So it was quite a project. Dave from DCB. We still talk all the time too. Brad and Connie, they were good people. They were just really down to earth, good people. That boat there was one of my favorite boats of all time. It's like a split. It's been an amazing, amazing journey and we've met so many incredible people. You know, obviously we all got to make a living doing what we do, but I really love what I do. Part of it is meeting the people and being around them and, and developing these friendships. It's more than the work, <laughs> you know. We started dating in uh, 02. It's kind of funny how we met. I met her in the shop and she was, she sold me light bulbs. <laughs> so so uh, that's how it started. We got married in, in 04 and built this house together. And she is extremely supportive with everything. Well, I work a lot of hours, you know, so I'm working seven days a week most of the time. Whatever I got to do, she's, she's on board. I, I knew it from day one when we first met. When we were first dating, I would have to wait till two o'clock in the morning sometimes for us to even talk on the phone. I knew going into that that the business had to grow. It was It's a big part of our lives, and I accepted that. Very proud of him. Our daughters are talented like that. They're extremely good artists. And when they were in college, I actually had them working at the shop a little bit. I was too hard to work for, they said, so they went a different direction. <laughs> so they have been a huge impact on my life. I think my girls and Laura probably helped me balance it the, the most. Otherwise, if I didn't have them, there'd be zero balance. I'd just be working all the time. Skiing is definitely a release. 
When I'm on the mountain, I kind of blank everything out. But then you're done and then it's like the work kind of comes back into the brain a little bit when you're when you got a lot sitting back at home needing to be done. We have a lot on the books. And, you know, everybody's worried about what tomorrow brings with the way the world is and everything. I mean, once you're at this age, you just don't know what tomorrow brings. I love what I do so much. I don't even think about retirement, to be honest with you. I don't know if I can sit still that, that long. But I feel like I do have a responsibility to the guys that work for me too, to keep everything rolling. At this point, um, full speed ahead.